If I fall off this, can you pick me up? <laughs> started when I realized a couple of years ago, actually, but just about two years ago now, that the American military were getting really interested in climate change. And I thought, ooh, that's interesting. But they were doing it because presumably they feel responsible, you know, their job is figuring out what threats there are to the United States, and they were beginning to see some. I would interview scientists and policymakers and generals senior officers who were dealing with climate change in Germany and Russia and Japan and China and America and Canada and Britain and France and so on. And that's what led to four conclusions. The first is that the numbers that come out of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which most governments are using as their guide to policy. Every single scientist I talk to in any country thinks those numbers are wrong. They think they're far too conservative. They think things are moving much faster. 80% cuts by 2050 will not do the job we probably need, we certainly need 100% cuts, and we could, we would be nice to have them by 2035, which is only 25 years from now. Second conclusion, the generals are right. When the warming becomes greater, and long before we hit runaway warming, there will be huge disruptions to the normal course of political and geopolitical business, because the principal early impact is on the food supply. And people get really unreasonable when they can't feed their children. So, um, some countries will be hit very hard by this, other countries much less hard. The further away you are from the equator, the less impact that if you live in Chile or Canada, you're fine. If you live in Mexico or Israel, you're not. Um, the closer you are to the equator, the worse the damage, the earlier the damage, and there will be a global shortage of food, which will probably lead to failed states. Governments that cannot feed their populations do not survive. Will lead to waves of climate refugees pushing up against borders that do not wish to admit them. And it will, in some cases, I think, lead to wars. The danger is particularly acute when you have a river that runs through several countries with less water in it than there used to be. So Pakistan versus India, Iraq and Syria versus Turkey, Egypt versus Sudan and Ethiopia. If the upstream states hang on to the water because there's not enough to go around anymore, the downstream state might go to war.